Hey girls and guys, it's Presley, and today in this video, I'm going to be talking about the alternate versions of books I would read, part 5. Now before I get into this video, I want to let you guys know a spoiler alert for any of you guys who haven't read any of these books. Now with that out of the way, let's get on to the first book of this part 5 video. The other alternate version of a book I would read is in the lucky list. What if Emily kissed Blake at the bonfire? Now what originally happened is that Emily kissed her ex-boyfriend Matt because the reason why she did that is because other people were at the bonfire and some people were expecting her to kiss her ex-boyfriend even though Emily deep down inside she really liked girls and she wanted to you know I guess fit in with everybody. She didn't want to like surprise people. I bet deep down inside she wanted to kiss Blake, but she kissed Matt instead. But I feel like if Emily did kiss Blake at the bonfire, everybody at the bonfire would get surprised that Emily would kiss Blake. Blake would probably get surprised too, but kind of into it, you know? I feel like that would have been a better option for Emily to kiss Blake because Blake really liked Emily when, you know, they became friends and got to know each other and doing the whole lucky lit, the whole bucket list for Emily's mom because Emily's mom died of cancer and stuff like that. And they wanted to, and Emily wanted to do her mom's bucket list and Blake decided to join in just because. And then they formed a friendship and then eventually became lovers in the end. And I like that, but it would have been interesting if Emily kissed Blake at the bonfire just to improve, just to up up their relationship. So anyway, on to the next book. The next alternate version of a book I would read is in every last word. What if Samantha told the Crazy Eights about the Poets' Corner? Now, if you don't know who who the Crazy Eights are, that's Samantha's friend group. Now, I say friend group in quotes is because they're not necessarily Samantha's friends. They're basically a group of popular girls that don't really care about Samantha. Well, a couple of them do, but some of them really don't. And um, the poet people in the Poets' Corner told Samantha, hey, you can't tell anyone about us. And if you do, we could kick you out or something along those lines. But Samantha, apparently in the book, she knows how to keep secrets. But I feel like if Samantha did tell the um, Crazy Eights on where she's been the whole time, um, I feel like it would get some weight lifted off her chest, although she would betray the Poets' Corner for, you know, telling, you know, other people about the Poets' Corner. At, at least she would get some closure and just, you know, get some weight removed off her chest and be like, hey, this is where I've been. Sorry I've left you, but or something like that. And if um, Samantha told them about her OCD, I don't know, I feel like if um, Samantha told the Crazy Eights the truth about where she's been, why she's been acting the way she's acting, she's been suppressing her OCD, I feel like the Crazy Eights, some of the Crazy Eights would be like, ugh, you got OCD? You shouldn't be in our group. She would probably be kicked out of the Crazy Eights and the Poets' Corner for um for keeping all the secrets and betraying their trust and samantha would probably be alone she wouldn't have any friends if she told if she told um her group of friends the truth but it would be an interesting thing to you know see in an alternate version of a book like that so anyway on to the next book the next alternate version of a book i would read is in Local Woman Missing. What if B agreed to go to the police with Meredith? Now, what originally happened is that B was so scared of going to the police about her little hit and run drunk driving incident that she was willing to kill Meredith because Meredith was so scared. She got, you know, traumatic nightmares because of it. And B killed her because of that because B didn't want anybody and I mean anybody knowing about what she's done. Because she was afraid that she'd be going to jail and that her girlfriend would dump her. But I feel like if B did agree to go to the police with Meredith, one, Meredith wouldn't, wouldn't have been killed off by B. Two, Delilah wouldn't be abducted 
and put up in B's attic for like what 10 years or so because that was kind of messed up that what B did because Delilah was the witness to her um to Meredith's you know well B will be what B did that um Delilah saw was that she hit Meredith with a ham um like a hammer to the head and honest Delilah thought that that her mom died at that point but she didn't know but I feel like if B would have just cooperated and told the police what happened she would probably get like what six months of jail along with Meredith and if she would explain why to her girlfriend I don't know maybe her girlfriend would stay with her I don't know it would just be an interesting little plot thing. I, I, I just wish B would have just cooperated. She would, she freaked the hell out and she would be willing to murder again because of this. Like, wow, B is deep down a psycho. You never know that a person could be hiding this sort of thing inside themselves when something drastic happens. It's crazy. Anyway, on to the final book. The last alternate version of a book I would read is in That Was Then, This Is Now. What if Brian didn't call the cops on Mark? I feel like if Brian didn't call the cops on Mark, Mark obviously wouldn't go to jail. But if um, Mark didn't go to jail, Mark would still, you know, sell drugs because Mark this whole time was selling drugs in order to get money because Mark didn't know any other way to get money. No other job applications, no other job places would hire him. So Mark thought of the only thing possible to get money, to sell drugs. And Brian was so shocked by this, he called the cops. And that left Brian feel broken, empty, questioning the what ifs. And what if he went back in time to the things, um, the way things used to be? And it would have been interesting if Brian didn't call the cops on Mark because I feel like Brian would have that guilt left inside him. If he didn't call the cops, he would be questioning again a what if. He'd be like, what if I did call the cops on Mark? I feel like it would leave a strain on their relationship because Brian obviously knows what Mark has done. And Mark doesn't know that Brian has been snooping around his room and stuff. So their relationship would be strained. They would still be together as somewhat friends, but their relationship as friends would just be stranded, like kind of all over the place. It was just, I just felt bad for the both of them, especially Brian. He's, he's gone through a lot of stuff and he doesn't want to go through the cycle of hatred just because of it. Brian has changed and his friend Mark hasn't but that little what if thing that brian's been questioning about what if he didn't call the cops on mark that would be interesting and if someone else caught mark oof, that would have been pretty interesting too so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video like comment share subscribe all that jazz and i'll see you guys in the next video peace